Okay friends, it is another day and today I am going to do the final installation of my Briarfest haul and experience video. Um, it's been a couple of weeks <laughs> since I filmed the last part of this video. Um, it just took a while for all my stuff to get here, but it is all here and I did get my ribbons from Briar, so in this little segment I'm gonna do a clip talking about the open show and my placings and how I did and how it went and then I'm going to show you a final overview um, of all of my horses and I also might do a close-up of a couple of the really cool ones just because they're really cool and I got some really cool horses this year and I'm really happy with them so hold on we're almost done <laughs> so I'm going to do my little clip or segment on the open show and how I entered and how my entries went and then also how they did and how everybody placed. Um, so before I get into exactly like which horse is placed and how the show experience was, um, I wanna talk about like my entry process for a little bit. Um, so the show this year was hosted on Pony Bites, uh, which for those of you who don't know, it's a photo showing platform online. And I was warned in advance that Pony Bites was like super difficult to use and like the Briar staff told everybody to do test runs just to get used to the platform and everything like that. And just like, just to say, just to give them some credit, I really didn't think it was too hard to use. Um, it was pretty straightforward. My issues came from personal problems that I created for myself. Um, I decided right before the open show that I was going to completely redo all of my photo show entries. I was going to take all new pictures, uh, I was going to add a watermark, I was going to just like completely redesign my photo show entries. Um, I've been photo showing for over a year now, about a year and a half, so I did have like a standard set of photos that I was using, and I decided like, you know, a month or two before Briarfest that I wanted to completely redo them to kind of step up my game a little bit, which in theory is great, but realistically, I did not have the time for that. <laughs> so I ended up um, only having about half of those entries, half of those new entries, entries actually completed by the time the open show came around. That being said, I was not able to enter the amount of horses in the open show that I could have. I was only able to enter the models that I had those new updated photo entries for. So we were allowed to enter 150 horses total. I think I entered like less than 70 maybe less than 60. Um, and it was literally not the top of my show string. It was only whatever horses I had taken pictures of and that I had those updated entries for. So I was not able to be super strategic with my entries like I was last year, just because it literally came down to entering whatever horses I had available and that I had edited pictures of. So. That was my own fault for poor time management, but thought I was gonna have more time to do my pictures and I honestly just didn't. I had a lot of things thrown at me this summer that I wasn't, wasn't really anticipating and so um, I did not have the amount of time that I thought I was going to have. <laughs> so um, that being said, I was not perfect um, in my prep and my entries for the show. But I did end up bringing home three more ribbons than I did last year. Um, last year I brought home four from the Briarfest Open Show and this year I brought home seven. And um, I did get a fifth place last year, so that seems to be the highest placing that I've brought home from both years. Um, but honestly, any ribbons from this show are a big deal. Um, I photo show online all the time and so ribbons aren't necessarily what I'm after at the end of the day, um, just getting recognition in a show of this caliber is, is kind of the goal at this point for me. So I'm really happy that I brought home these ribbons and um, I'm gonna switch gears now and kind of talk about the show itself and how I felt that it went and um, which horse is placed. Okay, so in the same way that I was not completely um, perfect with my entries, 
There were also some things with the judging and the way that the show ran that, you know, maybe weren't perfect, which is going to happen with a show of this size and this volume being held virtually. I completely get it. Um, there were a couple wonky things that did happen, one of which was there was an entire class that like just did not get judged. Um, and all the overalls and everything had been announced and the class hadn't been pinned. And so I reached out to the show host and they did pin the class afterwards, but it seemed kind of strange that the class hadn't been pinned and they did still end up releasing overalls. Um, without taking that class into consideration. I had a horse get seventh place in it, so it's not like that would have affected me or anything. It was just like a little strange that, that the one class hadn't been pinned. And there were a couple instances also where I saw Geldings and Stallions winning, or Stallions winning the Mare and Geldings classes and vice versa, a Gelding or a Mare winning a Stallion class. And that might just be something nitpicky that I care about because of the photo shows that I've judged and and how picky that those particular show series were. Um, maybe that's not something that's super common to care about um, in the live showing world. I'm not really sure, but there were just like a couple of things that were a little bit wonky, but overall I felt like it ran really smoothly. They were able to get results out to us the day that Briarfest started and it was super fun to be able to like keep up with my placings while watching the live stream. So the way that they kind of rolled out the results was really, really cool. So now moving on to talking about which of my horses actually did place. Um, first I had my Masquerade or Golden Boy who took fifth in the Mixed Pony Special Run class, uh, which was a really competitive class, so it was cool to get such a high placing in it. Um, this girl, um, I show her under the name Gala. This is the one from the class that wasn't pinned. Um, she was in the Quarter Horse Mare, I, I believe Quarter Horse Mare class. Um, and I kind of entered her on a whim, like I said, because she was one of the only entries I had done. And she did pull a ribbon, she pulled a seventh, so that was cool. Um, next, not surprisingly, was another newsworthy. My Enchanted Forest pulled an eighth in the regular run. I believe it was a Euro Pony class, or maybe it was UK Pony. Um, I think it was UK Pony, because I show him as a Welshie. And this guy does show really well for me. He actually just recently won an overall show reserve champion, so um, in another photo show, so. That was cool to see him get recognized. Um, and then here we have my Theo or Parker. Oh, hello cat. And he pulled a ninth in the regular run American draft class. Um, this is Adoration and she, I show her as an Australian stock horse and she pulled a 10th in other stock. Antigone or Crane pulled a 10th in the Thoroughbred Stallion class. And finally, my beau, or Chapman is the name I show him under, pulled a 10th in, I believe, one of the um, special run cat, really? The special run German warm blood class or other warm blood class. They split the, the warm blood classes just because there's so many. Uh, so he pulled 10th in whichever one that I decided to enter him in. Um, overall, a little bit of like a, a different variety of horses placed than I normally have placed in photo shows. Um, I do have a few consistent placers. My Enchanted Forest and my Boons always, almost always pull ribbons. Um, and my Crane has pulled a few and my Theo has pulled a few, but my Golden Boy, my Bow, my Don't Look Twice, they don't really pull ribbons like ever, and I do show them consistently, so it was interesting. Um, interesting to see differences in judges' opinions in a class or in a show like the Briarfest Open versus um, the photo shows that I do online. So overall, it was a really fun experience. Hopefully, next year, if they do a virtual show of any kind, I will have my entries more prepared. Um, but even so, I'm super happy to bring home this many ribbons when I was really just entering horses on a whim. Um, so 
my bad on that end, but I am super happy with these guys and to have almost doubled my ribbon count from last year. Okay, so here we are for some close-up clips on all of the horses that I got. Um, this girl you actually didn't see me unbox. This was my second Danny that I bought secondhand. Uh, my original Danny is going to stay new in box, but I just wanted to show you guys a clip of Danny. Hello. Out of the box. Um, I chose to take this one out of the box just because she does have a lot better shading. Um, her brown kind of varies in color as where this one's brown is very uniform throughout her neck and face. Um, this one's got some variation and her roaning is very pretty. Um, she's pretty crisp. She's got pretty crisp markings, generally speaking. She is super pretty, super detailed for a celebration horse, you guys. Like, look at her face markings. They're so, like, so intricate for a celebration horse. I just really love her and I'm super excited to show her. I feel like, you know, I feel like she has a lot of potential to do well in the show ring. So there is my out of box Danny. And because I had to do them close to each other, here's my true north. Here's a close up of him. Here's his beautiful mapping. I just love this guy. I'm so excited to finally have one. He is even nicer in person than I had thought he was going to be. Look at the mapping on his face and the pinking on his nose. He's just, he is something. Like I always wanted this horse because I love the mold and so I wanted the original, but like, he is just beautiful. I'm very excited to have him. Okay, and then really quickly, here is a close up of my matte, or I'm sorry, of my, yeah, my matte silver black Slant of Surprise. Say that five times fast. Um, so here's this girl. I think mine is a lighter variation. Um, I've seen quite a few that are really, really dark, and she seems quite chocolatey. Uh, which I really like because you can see her dapples, they are very prominent. Um, and I just think she's pretty. I wasn't expecting to like this color. I really just wanted this model for my conga, but I really like her. I mean, get rid of the, the pearly mane and tail and she might be one of my favorite Giselles, but even so with the pearly, I really do have a liking for this color. She is really, really pretty. All right, and here we have the wild woman herself. This is Boudica and all of her blue war paint goodness. I do love this mold. I don't have a ton to say about her because her color is not super complex, but I am excited to have her and I am super looking forward to getting more horses on this mold. Okay, and here's Mr. Reverence. I decided to show him on this side uh, just because I really think you can see his mane well and the way that they did that color is actually the way the horse, the real horse's mane looks and their attention to detail when they're making these portrait horses is really, really impressive. But here he is, his beautiful buckskin pinto color, his lovely face and eyes. I just adore this mold, adore this color. He's gonna be a lovely addition. Okay, and then here's the glossy boy and all of his shiny glossy goodness. He is lovely, super, super thick gloss. You can see it on the camera, which kind of just shows you how thick it actually is. Um, and he is lovely. I'm so excited to have pulled this guy. He wasn't my favorite color. Hello. My favorite was the um, Sabino, but this guy in gloss is really doing something for me. So I'm super excited to have him. And um, yeah, we're gonna see. We're gonna see how he does. I picked out a breed assignment for him. He's entered in a show right now. So there he is, Mr. Glossy. Okay, here's Duende. He really is a unique color. I have not ever seen a color like this in person. Um, but I'm a big fan and I love this mold. I'm super excited to have this guy and to add him to my conga and you know, Try to get him some brothers here soon because I am a fan. Okay, and here we have Mr. Nirvana. Uh, he is a, he was the Seattle Soiree event, one of the boutique event models from the Seattle Soiree. I believe he's a run of like 95 or 96, something along those lines. And he is lovely. He's got these beautiful detailed brown eyes against this 
black blanket appy coat and he has even got he's this shaded black so he does have shading even though his coat is just a jet black so i'm super excited to have him i love Idacus, and when this horse came out i was so envious of everyone that got pulled for seattle because just look at him <laughs> so i'm super excited to have him now and he will make a lovely addition Okay, last but not least is Mr. Rubicon here. And he is, he was number 228 out of 350 made for the Connoisseur series. Uh, I'm so excited to have him. His coloring is just amazing. He does have mapping. It is light, but he has mapping on all of these brown details here. And then he has these ghost spots throughout the rest of his body. And he's just stunning. The Connoisseur series is just unparalleled. I mean, these horses are just amazing. They're like bigger run raffle models. <laughs> so there's Mr. Rubicon. I'm so excited to have him. I have wanted this horse for literally years. So I'm so happy to have one. And um, yeah, there he is. All right, guys. So here is the final official Briarfest 2021 haul. Um, all of the horses that I got this year. I am so happy with them. I went from really not being super excited about Briarfest because I didn't really like a lot of the special runs to having like a haul that I am just as happy with as my haul last year where I loved all of the special runs. Um, I was able to get all of the horses that I wanted from Briar directly outside of some of the surprise horse variations that I'll be looking to snatch up here in the future. Um, and I was able to get so many cool horses off the secondary market or the secondhand market um, throughout the last couple of weeks too. Uh, and they're just all amazing. They all fit very well into my collection. And I am happy with everything and just that I was able to participate this year. Um, you know, it's it's a privilege to be able to do something like that and I never want to try to take it for granted. So without further ado, I'm going to recap all of my goodies. Starting over here, we have Rubicon, the connoisseur, who was another secondhand purchase. Um, Duende from the Premier Club, also a secondhand purchase. Nirvana, who's got a pretty spotty booty who is an event model. Um, so I got to add an event model, a connoisseur, and a premier club horse in my Briarfest haul. And that was really cool. <laughs> I'm so, so excited to have these guys. Um, and then next to them, obviously, was my glossy surprise horse that I pulled, the glossy Pintaloosa. Um, there he is in all of his glory. And I'm so happy to have pulled my first ever glossy surprise horse. Uh, he's really cool. and. I love the seven art surprise. I like all the colors and I love Dundee and I'm just really excited about all of them. So in the middle, we have all of my fun store stuff. So Palace Palette, the plush, who's adorable and also hanging out in my horse of a different color mug that I'm super excited about. I didn't get one last year, like I said, so I'm glad they were pretty similar to last year's because now I get one. Um, and then kind of underneath there, I have my magnet that I got, and I also did get a pin. And then in front of them are the four out of the five Best of Briarfest stable mates that I'm keeping. I'm actually using that other appy in a giveaway, so he's already boxed up, but there are the four that I am keeping. I especially love the mini Tom Thumb. Um, I just love the Highland Pony mold, and this color just suits it so well. I can't wait to get that little guy in the show ring soon. All right, and on this other side first, we have Matt Reverence, uh, the limited edition store special. Uh, I will also be getting a glossy one. And I just love the ash car mold, so anything on it I'm going to get, but especially this lovely buckskin pinto. Like what a cool color. I think that's one of my favorite um, unique colors that Briar chose to depict this year. He's just so cool and the real horse is really cool and the people that own the real horse are really cool and I just love him. So <laughs> there he is. Um, oh, what's her name? Boudicca. Um, and then we have Boudicca who is part of the Celtic fling grab bag. 
Uh, I'm actually really happy to get her, ironically, because I don't collect decorators. Um, but I'm starting to want to collect this mold, the Andalusian mare mold. Um, I think she's really pretty and I'm trying to get my hands on more of them right now. Um, and this color is so unique because it's really not supposed to be like a horse that's blue. It's supposed to be a gray horse that has blue war paint. Um, I think that's really cool. So I didn't get her. She was one of the only special runs from last year that I did not get. And I was actually hoping that she was going to be in the Celtic fling grab bag. So I'm happy to have her. And speaking of horses that I was hoping to have in the Celtic Fling grab bag, the silver black Slancha Surprise was the only Slancha Surprise that I did not that I did not get my hands on um, during Briarfest 2020. And so I was really hoping that the silver black would be the one in my grab bag, and she was. So I got really lucky. Really, really lucky with that grab bag. And with obviously with uh, Senior Glossy over there. Um, so even though I didn't have like a massive haul this year, it was a good haul. Like I did, I did pretty well. I was pretty happy. <laughs> and then here at the end, twinning our True North and my out of box Danny. That's who I was waiting on to do this final um, clip was my second Danny that I bought um, aftermarket kind of. So yeah, True North, another premier club horse that I was able to snag second hand. Um, he's lovely. I just love his color. And then obviously Danny, who is also beautiful and I also love her color. And they just look so cute together. And oh, I'm so glad Danny was the celebration horse this year. She was just perfect for the role. And then in the back, we just have my uh, recyclable horse of a different color bag. I do really love the colors and the design of that bag. They did a really good job with it. And then we have my new inbox, Danny. She will stay new in box. I like to keep one celebration horse of every Briarfest that I participate in new in box just for a display. And then there is my program, which was the one that Briar uh, had for sale. Okay, y'all, there they are. <laughs> so there is my Briarfest 2021 haul done and over. It's been almost two months at this point. Uh, it's been a month and a half since Briarfest and I was patient and I waited it out to show you guys this final overview haul picture. So here it is <laughs> in all of its glory. Okay, you guys, so that was it. Um, that you guys just watched my Briarfest unboxings from pretty much like my first Danny through all of the horses that I got um, on different days and you've seen all my show placings and an overview and close-ups and yeah so you've seen it all that's all I have for Briarfest 2021. Um, I did love this year's Briarfest the event itself was amazing I was actually able to be home and to enjoy the content. Um, I was able to watch the live stream all three days and I wasn't like constantly doing Briarfest. I had a couple responsibilities I had to tend to so I did take advantage of the fact that Briar left the content up. Um, I believe through like mid-August, if not the end of August. Um, and I did go back and watch some of the live stream uh, while I was doing projects up here in the horse room. So that was really cool. Um, I loved all of that. I loved that aspect of Briarfest and the live aspect and getting to watch the auction virtually. It was all just really, really cool. The shipping was a little bit of a bummer this year, um, but all of my horses got here safely and that's really all that matters. So I am glad that they got here safely and you know, hopefully shipping for people that participate virtually next year will be a little bit better, but you know what? horses are here and they're beautiful so I'm not gonna not gonna dwell on that um so next year Briarfest 2022 is pros pros um it's German themed it's like German for celebration or something don't quote me on that I don't speak German but it's like a German themed Briarfest which is so exciting um and also so dangerous so dangerous for me because it probably means warm bloods like 
every prominent warm blood breed comes from Germany. So it's going to cause problems for me. And they have a lot of draft breeds and pony breeds. Like it's gonna be Celtic fling all over again in terms of like, I'm going to need every single horse. So I'm already just planning my inevitable doom for that one. Um, and I'm like starting to save now because I'm probably gonna want everything. Um, so pray for me. And also, it'll be interesting to see how they incorporate, if part of Briarfest is back at the horse park, how they're going to incorporate the virtual aspect of it. There's a very, 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 very good chance that I will not be able to go in person next year just because Briarfest weekend falls right in between the date that I'm taking the bar exam, which I have to pass in order to become a lawyer, which is like the whole point of my seven years of higher education. And when I'm getting married, there's like three weeks between those two things and one of those weekends is Briarfest. So the likelihood of me being in person at Briarfest next year, very slim. Um, but whatever I can do virtually, I will definitely do virtually. And other than that, I'll have to see if somebody can do pickups for me because I know I'm gonna need them. Um, if, you know, accessibility to certain models is limited by participating virtually. So, outside of that, you guys, um, I do have some fun videos.